Let's get a steady grip on that. All right. Ventilator. We're still on. Here's some more sponges. Good. All right, give me more. It's BP. Uh, 50 over 90 and falling. Oh, let's retract a little bit. Easy. Easy. One more sponge. Dr. Kroll, you're needed yeah. in an emergency. Yeah. Stack. Oh, Dr. Ready? Kroll to emergency. Yes, Stack, please. Getting nothing. He's gone. Yeah. Ivy nurse to east wing. All right. Ivy nurse to east wing, please. Okay. All right. Pack it up. Yeah. Take him out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll give a call right now. seat on the flight to Vegas? No, the five o'clock flight's no good. I need to leave as soon as possible. Oh, never mind. I'll drive. Dad? What's going on? How come you're home? Peter is dead, Melanie. He shot himself. Oh, God. You know, I got a call from a neighbor at work. He took him to the hospital, and it was too late. You know, he didn't even leave a note. Dad, you did everything you could. It's not your fault. I know. Listen, um, I want you to go to St. Louis and stay with your mother for a while, okay? Why? I'm supposed to spend the summer with you. No, but I gotta leave town. I can't leave you here by yourself. Why do I have to go to Mom's? Can't I just stay with a friend or something? No, no. Come on, help me out, all right? Your plane leaves at 6.45. It's your flight number. Take a ticket up at the airport. You know how to do that, right? Yeah. Now, a shuttle's coming to get you at 5.20. I love you. Dad. S-K-Y. Ken. There are two rooms. The other room's under the name of Mason. Perry Mason. My room overlooks the pool. Yours overlooks the golf course. You're gonna have a terrific time. I will if we change rooms. <laughs> but this is a hot ticket, you know. If I hadn't represented Billy Landau in his divorce, we never would have gotten ringside seats. Believe me, Perry, you're gonna love it. Ken, relax. I will love it. Will that be check or credit card, Mr. Melansky? Uh, credit card. Here. I'll wait over there. Right. Harry, Mason. Mr. Stewart. Well, you in town for court or the fight? Same thing sometimes. What about you? Well, I hope to draw some blood at the poker table. I hold a private game here every year. You may have read about it. Everybody's read about it. Or was that the whole idea? Well, my guests don't complain. You'd be surprised what a little free publicity can do for a business or for a career. Perhaps you should consider joining us this year. Thank you, no. Enjoy the flight. All set. Looks familiar. Who was that? Richard Stewart. PR guy? Yep. Friend? Nope.
thought I saw an old friend of mine. Mr. Stewart? Uh, Mr. Stewart is a guest. Still having his famous poker game? I really couldn't say, sir. You were gonna sneak off an easy when I wasn't looking, weren't you, Martin? All well, 300 calories, all 840 milligrams total. They're just peanuts for no, crying I'm out loud. They're poison. Maybe I was saving them for you. Oh, well, maybe I'll take them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, everybody, dig in. Can't play poker on an empty stomach. Well, Dan, but it's not as much fun that way, I can tell you that. <laughs> hey, look, you know, I don't know why you fellows are so upset with the Japanese. Their money is just as green as everybody's. Well, you know, if they had run at the oil business the way they did at ours, you'd think differently, too. No, oh, you see, you automobile boys, you dropped the ball. You know, as fascinating as all this is, why don't we just get started? As soon as Cliff gets here. He was late last year, too. Man's totally irresponsible. Probably takes drugs, you know? All those showbiz people do. And they used to accuse me of making gross generalizations. Oh, Senator, listen, when you were in office, nobody could figure out what you were saying. <laughs> Hola! Housekeeping. Sorry I'm late, gentlemen. I had to sign about 100 autographs on my way to the elevator. Some guys won't do it, but somehow I just cannot say no. So I hear. Yeah, are you still in that TV sitcom where you play the wrestling coach in that girls' school? Hey, it's our eighth season. What can I say? I'm not complaining, but there is nothing <laughs> like the laughter from a live audience. Present company accepted. <laughs> <laughs> David Benson. Peter Benson's brother. You remember Peter Benson, don't you? Oh, yes. Committed suicide today. Yes, I was told. Yeah. You know, because of you, he spent the last two years watching everything that meant anything to him go down the drain. You put that bullet through his head. So now you're gonna put one through mine? Is that the idea? You're damn right I am. I'm very sorry about what happened to your brother, David. But he shot himself because he was emotionally unstable. I know that. You know that. This isn't going to solve anything. I don't think that you really want to pull that trigger. That did hit him where it hurts the most when he least expected. That's just like a politician. At least I wasn't just standing there. Get me security. Jay, get off the phone. Hang up. Gonna do with I'm going to give him back what he came in with. And then I'm going to suggest that he go. And I'm going to pretend this never happened. Right, David? Richard, don't you think you should report this to the police? I don't want him involved. I don't need that kind of publicity. No, none of us do. Oh, I'll drink to that. Let's play poker. Hello? Too bad you didn't pull the trigger, David. Who is this? How did you know about it? I've got something on Richard Stewart that you could use to great advantage. What are you talking about? What? 
Be at the north end of the Desert Grand parking lot in 20 minutes and I'll tell you. Richard Stewart go to prison. I love it. Who are you? I used to be his mistress. I heard things, lots of things. You know, about the way he does business, the people he does business with. Anyway, uh, I quit my job for him and he put me up in this real nice condo. Then about a month ago, he drops me just like that. Left me out on the street. I want to get even. So why don't you just go to the police? Well, look, Stuart cut me off without a cent. No, he left me drowning in bills. I just need some money. How much money? About 20,000. What? Hey, your brother's dead because of Richard Stewart. I'm giving you the chance to put him away here. Yeah, but I don't have $20,000. <laughs> this is Vegas. It's pocket change to people around here. Get it. I'll call you tomorrow. Wait a minute. on the table. Melanie? Dad, it took me five bucks worth of phone calls to try and figure out which hotel you were staying in. Next time, just tell me, okay? Why aren't you in St. Louis? Well, I heard you say you were going to Vegas, so when I got to the airport, I changed my ticket. Melanie? Dad. Dad, you really scared me. I had to find out what was going on. I haven't been much of a father lately, have I? When Peter died, I just lost it. I was so angry, I just wanted to kill Richard Stewart. I had a gun pointed right at him, but I couldn't do it. And I would have had to live with Mom and her boyfriend for good, right? I'm sorry, I spent too much time worrying about Peter. Well, he was your brother. Yeah. Sorry, sweetheart, I'll make it up to you, okay? Uh, 
I'm Detective Sergeant Hollenbeck. This is Officer Parsons, Las Vegas Police Department. Are you David Benson? Yes, I am. That's my daughter, Melanie. What's going on? Can we come in? I understand you own a 9 millimeter Beretta. Yes, I do. You have it with you? Yeah. May I see it? Yeah. Why do you want to see his gun? A man named Richard Stewart was shot and killed in his room earlier tonight. Find it, Mr. Benson? No? I didn't think you would. All right, you're coming with us. Take her to Juvenile Hall. Where the hell did she go? Are you aware that Richard Stewart was murdered last night? Very aware. Who told you, the police? Waiter who brought my coffee. Have you formed an opinion? Just one. Now look, Mr. Mason is here for the fight. He has nothing to do with this case. Now please, just leave him alone. Miss? Oh, God. I'm sorry I fell asleep. Um, I'm Melanie Benson. I got the maid to let me in. I hope that's okay. I thought if I waited for you in the lobby, I might miss you. I have to talk to you right away. About what? About my father, David Benson, the guy they arrested for murdering Richard Stewart. He needs a lawyer, and since everyone says you're so good and all, and since you're in town anyway, I thought I'd hire you. So, let's go see my dad, okay? Uh... Hiring an attorney is not quite the same as ordering a pizza, Miss Benson. Oh, well, if it's the money thing you're worried about, my dad will pay you whatever you want. Though it would be kind of nice if you could, um, break it down into, you know, installments. Did he send you here? No, this was my idea. Young lady, this town is full of attorneys who are not just here overnight, you might say whose schedules are infinitely less hectic than mine. Why don't you try one of them? No, but you don't... And make an appointment first. Breaking and entering tends to create a less than favorable first impression. Perhaps the concierge in the lobby will help you. I don't need the concierge. I need you. My father was framed. The cops think they have an open and shut case. He doesn't need just any lawyer. He needs the best, and I was told that's you. You were misinformed. I'm sorry. I, I'm really sorry. But I have a lot of work to do. I think you'd better go. They also told me the reason why you're the best. It's because you care about justice. You just keep on going and going until you find out the truth. They didn't tell me you only did it when it could fit into your hectic schedule. Of course, um, the truth is, my dad is practically broke, and he probably doesn't have a chance no matter who defends him. So never mind. Sorry I interrupted you. Let's go find your father. My brother was an attorney, one with a conscience. And one day he decided that he was going to change those things around and that he didn't like, he would have to get involved, run for political office, which he did. And according to the polls, he would have won. 
Only his opponent fired his campaign manager and he brought in Richard Stewart, who immediately discovered that Peter had seen a psychiatrist several years earlier, after his wife had died of cancer. And he made it public. Hell, he made it the central issue of the whole campaign. Every day he would leak out small rumors concerning Peter's emotional problems to the press. By the time that election rolled around, he had everybody believing that my brother was dangerously incompetent. Sounds like Richard Stewart, all right. You know, he discredited my brother so well that he not only lost the election, he lost his whole law practice. One by one, his clients dropped him. Everybody turned away. Except you. Let me put it this way. Peter supported the family. He made sure I got through school. I owed him everything. Just how bad did it get for your brother? Bad. First he started drinking. And he started using. No, I tried to get him to stop, but he just shut me out. I tried to help him all I could. You know, it cost me my marriage. It jeopardized my career. For nothing. He wound up killing himself. All because of Richard Stewart. This woman named Jennifer you were meeting with at the time of the murder, what can you tell me about her? You know, she was young, blonde, medium build. She drove a little yellow convertible. License plate? Um, I didn't see it. Then there was a, there was a sticker on the front windshield, on the driver's side. It was blue with pink numbers on it, like a parking permit. Not much, but it's a start. You know, I still can't figure out whether she was for real or whether she's part of this whole frame. Well, in either case, she's your alibi, your only alibi. The sooner we find her, the better. I mean, you're taking the case? You want me to? Of course. Look, I don't know what Melanie told you, but I can't possibly pay you much. I didn't know your brother, Mr. Benson, but I've known a lot of people like him, people who were not just defeated by Richard Stewart's smear tactics, but destroyed by them. I haven't appeared in a Nevada court for 20 years. Maybe it's time I did again. Her weapon was found in one of the dumpsters behind a hotel about an hour after the murder. Not a very smart place to dispose of a murder weapon. Maybe your client isn't so smart. More likely, somebody stole that gun from his room when he was out, then put it in the dumpster after the murder, knowing that's the first place you'd look. Nobody stole that gun from Benson's room, Counselor. And he wasn't rendezvousing with any girl in any parking lot, either. I've got a witness who says that at 20 minutes after 1 this morning, that's approximately five minutes before the shot that killed Stewart was heard, this witness saw David Benson in the hotel. That's not possible. Here's a statement. Lose your money? No, I never put money in these things. Usually if I just once or twice and here 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 use money people around here prefer it that way for getting here so fast i gave you a big Oh, 
confuse me. Hello. Uh, I'm looking for Perry Mason. He's on the phone. Who are you? Uh, Della Street. Oh, you were the one he called this morning. Mm -hmm. You got here fast. Want some lunch or something? No, thank you, dear. Della? <laughs> yes. Della Street? Melanie Benson, our client's daughter. Uh, is there anything on the menu you didn't order? I need my strength. Yes, I know. The hotel owner has agreed to let us have this suite for the duration, so go ahead and set up whatever equipment you need. Your room's right over there. Okay. I'll change and set up right away. Uh, do you think we'll need a fax machine? We'll need to check out four men. They were with Richard Stewart when David Benson threatened him. Thank you. Names? L.D. Ryan, oil man and real estate developer from Houston. Stephen Elliott, used to be a U.S. senator, now he's a lobbyist. Jay Corelli. President of the Corelli Car Corporation. Cliff Bartell, actor. Cross-section of the rich and famous. They were all clients of Richard Stewart. You think one of them killed him? That would be my guess. Oh, where's Ken? In Stewart's suite. I'm just going to join him. Until her father is out on bail, we're going to have to keep an eye on her. Just for a couple of days. All right. She seems very sweet. You think so? Mm-hmm. Good. You can see those bullets, please? Thank you. You were right. Police found these in the wastebasket. 14 bullets. The gun holds 16, but they say the gun could have been two bullets short to begin with. And they say Benson brought extra ammunition. Right. There you go. I also found out that one of the nightmates was dismissed this morning for losing her pass key. She says it was stolen off her cart last night. So that's how the killer was able to steal David's gun and how he was able to get into this suite and kill Richard Stewart. Ken, find the woman who was with David at the time of the murder. What about that eyewitness the police have? I'll worry about him. Guess that means we'll be selling our tickets to the fight tonight. No. I'm Sarah Andrews. I was Mr. Stewart's personal secretary. Detective Hollenbeck said it would be all right if I collected Mr. Stewart's things. Go on in. Thank you. Excuse me. We won't have time. Sarah Andrews? I'm Della Street, Perry Mason's secretary. He's the attorney who's going Yes, to... I know. I was hoping you could tell us about the four men who played poker with Mr. Stewart the night he was murdered. Why? Because we suspect one of them was the murderer. I thought the police already had the murderer. Sarah, all of Richard Stewart's records are subject to a subpoena. You could be compelled to testify. Is that some kind of threat? I just want you to understand I... I know how unpleasant that could be for you. How long were you with him? 31 years. I've been with mine over 40. I know what it's like to devote your life to your job, to one man. Are you married? No. He was once, but it didn't last. He could be difficult, even mean. But he was always good to me. What you had with him was like a marriage. He was probably the closest person in the world to you. I know how terrible it must be for you to lose him. You can't imagine. 
Oh, yes. I can imagine. How'd it go? Well, I was not very truthful with her. Tell him. You are never not very truthful. Well, I certainly was not very truthful this time. But I am going to have dinner with her tonight before she leaves. She's a very nice woman, Perry. It's a hard time for her. I'm sure it is. Let's go. We've got that veil here. Well, where's Melanie? In there, going deaf. <laughs> Melanie! Melanie! I don't believe it. She's asleep. That's it. It's just like the one that was on Jennifer's car. Sticker for employee parking at the Desert Grand. Nice work. As soon as we're through here, I want you and Ken to sit down with the police composite artist and come up with a sketch of Jennifer. No problem. You must be uh, Perry Mason. Keith Warner. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. Traffic was impossible. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. I've uh, heard a lot about you. Nice of you to join us, Mr. Warner. Now that the prosecution is here, let's proceed to the matter of bail. Does the state wish to make any recommendations? It does indeed, Your Honor. Uh, the defendant uh, has been charged with first-degree murder. That's a very serious charge, Judge McKelvey. About as serious as they come. So whether he is guilty or not, it is only logical, if not mandatory, <laughs> that as responsible officers of this court, we assume that he will at some time or another consider fleeing from prosecution, which means that we are duty-bound, sir, to ask ourselves, what's to stop him? And the answer is nothing. This uh, uh, man has no family here. He has no roots to this community, no real assets or any money anywhere. Even if he were able to post bail, he'd feel no obligation to honor its terms. He has nothing to lose. What I'm saying, Your Honor, is if there were ever a case where bail should be denied, this, without a doubt, is it. Does counsel for the defense wish to make a statement? Yes, Your Honor, we do. Uh, my client has never been arrested before, has never even been detained before. Contrary to what the state contends, he doesn't want to flee the charges against him. He wants to face them. And in view of the fact that he is responsible for his teenage daughter and she is here with him, the risk of his leaving this jurisdiction is minimal. I request that bail be set no higher than $10,000. I have to go along with Mr. Warner on this one. Request for bail is denied. The defendant will remain in custody until time of his trial. Next case. Dad. Dad, what's going on? Are they going to keep you in jail? Oh, it's all right. It's all right. Okay. I'll be okay. Uh, David. I am sorry. Can you see that Melanie gets to her mother's okay? I will. Melanie. I'll uh, see you in court, Counselor. Better get packed. It looks like you're going to St. Louis. A book a plane. My mom's not there. I talked to her a couple of days ago. She and her boyfriend left for the Far East. I won't be able to get in touch with her for at least a month. You mean you didn't tell her? No. I didn't want to worry her. I guess it looks like you're stuck with me then, huh? I wouldn't have come to Las Vegas if it weren't for you. I wouldn't have stayed here if it weren't for you. But that doesn't mean I'm stuck with you. No, indeed. <clears throat> Richard.
Richard Stewart had his clients tell him everything, past and present. Anything that could harm their public image. That way, he could hide their skeletons in the closet. That means each of our four suspects trusted him with potentially damaging information. Mm -hmm. Sarah said his relationship with all of them was stormy, to put it mildly. But he trusted her implicitly. Would you like to read something about Cliff Bartell's deep dark secrets? What about the others? I'm still typing up my notes. What? What? This doesn't concern you. Well, this concerns my father. I want to know who framed him. When we find out, you'll find out. Well, I can help you find out. I can, um, I can follow people. I, I can spy on them. I can do whatever you want me to do. Not at the moment, thank you. Well, I want to do something. My dad's in jail, and I just can't sit here doing nothing. Is that a menu? Order something. When it gets here, this time, chew very slowly. I'm going to talk to Bartell. Oh, he's in room 518. No, I just saw him in the lounge. I'll be there if you want me for anything. And you'll need this. Bartell, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Name's Perry Mason, David Benson's attorney. Oh, just sit down. You want a drink? No, thank you. She's, uh, she's very good. Yes, so they say. Can I get another one of these, please? So, uh, what kind of questions did you want to ask me? Easy ones. Like, where were you at the time of the murder? Why are you asking me that? You were one of the last people to see Richard Stewart alive. Someone put you on to me? No, should they have? <laughs> um, I left the poker game and I came straight down here. Like you said, she's good. Alone? Hey, look. If it weren't for Richard Stewart, I'd still be playing the comedy club circuit. So why the hell would I want to kill him? Because of Maynard Tobias, perhaps? The man who was driving your car when it hit that nice young couple from Indiana and killed them. The man who's currently serving time for felony manslaughter. Right. That was awful. How did I know he was going to go out and get drunk that night he borrowed my car? Interestingly enough, because it was a hit and run, no one actually saw who was driving your car. What are you getting at? It occurs to me that perhaps you were driving and that Richard Stewart paid Tobias to take the rap for you in order to save your career. That is a lie. And if you start spreading it, I will sue you off the face of this planet. Don't worry. The check I'm running on Maynard Tobias reveals that he's come into any major assets since he's been in prison. I'll be very careful about whom I tell. Well... Thank you, Mr. Bartell. I will be talking to you again. Who is that? Oh, great. First a lawyer and now you. Is this my lucky day or what? Hey, be nice. I drop by to let you know that everything's on for tonight. Next time, use the phone. I can't be seen with you right now. Goodbye. When others are there, it's you I see. Only you for me. Oh, 
Wait till I tell you what I just overheard. This is really good stuff. I'm sure it is. What in the world? I thought she was she in a She is going to be there from now on. But I told you something big is going down tonight involving Cliff Bartell. Melanie, I would like you to go to your room. I can help. Either you go to your room or you go to a deep, dark dungeon. Now take your pick. She's just worried about her father, Barry. She's only 13. Maybe you should go a little easier, Ryan. You got it backwards. Well? Here are the rest of your reports. Oh, and Ken dropped by with this. Sketch from the police artist. Mm -hmm. So this is Jennifer. Right. Call Ken. Tell him to keep an eye on Bartell tonight. No, I haven't seen her. You might try personnel. I already did. Thanks anyway. Okay. Excuse me. Do you know this woman? Sure don't. I think she works here. Not on my shift. All right, thanks. Excuse me. Hello, Senator. Perry Mason. Yes. We met several years ago at a reception in Washington. You have a good memory. Yes. Of course, I'm aware of the fact that you're defending the man who's accused of murdering Richard Stewart. Mind if I ask you some questions? Depends on the questions. I understand you played poker with Richard Stewart only hours before his death. Yes, is that significant? Only if you can't account for your whereabouts after the poker game ended. Well, I suggest you ask my fellow players to account for their whereabouts. You get much more mileage out of their answers, I guarantee you. Why is that? Because I was at a floor show here at the hotel between 12 midnight and 2 a.m. I was with Gerald and Amanda Stearns, two old friends of mine from L.A. Speaking of old friends, what do you hear from Sharon Bennett? Sharon Bennett? She worked in your office as a page one summer. She was a junior in high school then. Yes, yes, of course. I haven't spoken to her in years. Who paid her to just disappear like that? You or Richard Stewart? I beg your pardon? I'm sure it was one of you. After all, you were married. You were on the Senate Ethics Committee. She was a minor. Had your constituents learned about her pregnancy and subsequent abortion, your political career would have been ruined. You know, I don't have to sit here and listen to this. And even now, were details of your affair with her to be made public, I doubt you'd be much in demand anymore as a spokesman for political causes. Is that some kind of a threat? Oh, no. I don't make threats. I just give good advice. And if you know more than you're telling, it'd be wise to tell me rather than a court. Next time, counselor, bring a subpoena. There won't be a next time. Police are not going to hassle me. Because they already arrested some guy. I don't know. As far as they're concerned, the case is closed. No, I am not going to use you as my alibi. I got to go. I, I really do. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, I love you too. Bye. Oh, here. Thanks.
I don't suppose you guys know how to find the pool. All right, everybody, freeze! You, drop your weapon now! This is the police. Throw down your weapons and step away. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Give up this fight anything you say can and will be used against you. people always hang out with drug dealers, counselor, or were you just soliciting new clients? I don't have to advertise, Sergeant. Cases seem to find me. You're lucky we were tailing those creeps, or you would have wound up in the parking lot hit first. Too bad they didn't have the drugs on them. They're telling me. They're all gonna walk. Mr. Bartell, don't you think it's time you explained what you were doing with those four? I don't have to explain anything, but I will tell you this. I was with them the night Richard Stewart was murdered. They're my alibi. He's lying. He was with some woman at the time of the murder. I heard him talking to her on the phone. L.D. Ryan is taking the red eye back to Houston tonight. It's my bet he'll be in the casino until he leaves. If I miss him, we may not see him again until the trial. Here, get the car for us, will you? It's out back. Go. Right there. Yeah. All right. That's the way I like it. I like my money up front and in cash. Isn't that sweet? You want to get in on some of this action, my friend? I never gamble with money. Well, that's all I ever do. That's for you now. I got me a plain cash. Mr. Ryan, I'm Harry Mason. Mm -hmm. David Benson's attorney. I'm the one who left you all those messages today. Is that a fact? It certainly is. Why didn't you answer me? Well, now, I'll tell you, I think the hotel must have screwed up because the only message I got was from my CEO telling me to get home pronto. See, somebody is ready to sell me some land and I've been real anxious to get. I have a few questions for you concerning Richard Stewart. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't you talk to the police? Because them and me, we had a very thorough discussion about Richard about a couple of days ago. Did you tell them about the time you fired Richard Stewart and hired him back two days later? What's that got to do with anything? It has to do with the $27 million you made when Royal Dutch took over Fenway Oil. You made that money because somebody at Fenway Oil gave you inside information. Richard Stewart knew that. When you fired him, he threatened to tell, so you hired him back. Now, wait, that isn't the truth. I hired him back because when I went out there looking for another publicist, I found out that he was the best there is. And that's been years ago. Insider trading is still a very serious allegation. And you have even more to lose now than you did then, which means that this time, when Richard Stewart threatened to go public with what he knew, you couldn't afford to take any chances. Now, wait a minute. Are you saying that I killed him? Where did you go after the poker game that night? To bed. Alone? <laughs> I am a happily married man. <laughs> At least I was that night, anyway. But, now, look, I am a tin angel compared to the other three guys in that game. Now, I have flame to catch. Here's something for you to read on that play. you something. What is it? What does it look like? It's a book. What's it about? Oh, I don't know. The lady at the gift shop recommended it. Where's Perry? He's out tracking down Jay Corelli. You got something? Yeah, I finally got a lead on Jennifer. Nobody could ID her picture. But I started talking to somebody who told me the car she was driving looks a lot like one that belongs to a woman named uh, Alice Sherman. She used to be a blackjack dealer at the Desert Grand. Quit about six months ago. Did you talk to her? She's out of town. Won't be back until tomorrow. Any idea who the mystery woman is? Not yet. Mystery woman? Yeah, when I was tailing Bartell, he was talking on the phone to some woman. He promised to keep her out of all this. Do you think she could have done it? It's hard to say. 
So this. Oh, Sarah sent me copies of Richard Stewart's tax returns for the last five years. I wanted to see if he claimed any winnings from his annual poker games. Um, I, uh, ordered some food. I'll be in my room if you need me. All right, dear. Richard Stewart won $325,000 in this poker game? Mm-hmm. He didn't do badly in 1988, either. Look at this. Yes, um, Cliff Bartell, room 518, please. Oh, well then, um, can I leave a message? Just tell him to come see me right away. It's an emergency. We have to talk about last Friday night. No, that's okay. He'll know who it's from. Thank you. Can you cancel my order? Something came up, okay? Right there. Yeah. Just a second. The young lady ordered this, but she just left. Melanie! I gotta find her. Thinking of buying the hotel, Mr. Pirelli? I'm always thinking of buying everything. Sometimes I do. I don't think we've ever actually met, but I'm keenly aware of your reputation, Mr. Mason. And I with yours. An ugly rumor that says uh, you're representing this uh, psychopath, Murder Dick Stewart. No. I represent David Benson. Meaning you don't think he's a psychopath? Meaning you don't think he's a murderer? Oh, neither one. In fact, I was wondering if murder had something to do with the DLX-7 Pirelli Sports School. DLX-7 is ancient history, Mr. Mason. Not if what some people say is true. Which is what? That you knew about the problem with the anti-locking brakes all along, but chose to ignore it in order to meet a deadline. And that would have been criminal negligence. And it would have been wrong. Which is precisely why, when people started dying as a result of the faulty brake system, Richard Stewart paid whomever he had to, whatever he had to, in order to cover it up. That's slander. Only if it's untrue. But if it is true, and if Richard Stewart and you had some kind of falling out that led to his threatening to expose you, it would certainly give you a strong motive for committing murder. Just who have you been talking to? Those three losers who were at the poker game that night? Now, if you want to make your life a little more interesting, do some homework on them. Where did you go after you left them that night? Down to the casino. Were you with anyone? Lady Luck was with me. Be sure to bring her with you.
could she get out with both of you here? Stuff was coming in on the fax machine. I guess we got a little distracted. Perry, I have looked all over the place. Della has security looking for... Outside and inside. Mason, you had better put a leash and a muzzle on this kid, because if I see her again, I am going to sue the lot of you for harassment. I know where he was the night of the murder. He was with that singer, Belinda Foster. Would you do something about her? I think they both killed Richard Stewart. That's exactly what I think. Melanie, that is enough. We need the truth, Mr. Bartell. You know who Sam Shuba is? Crime boss from Chicago. Yeah, well, these days he kind of commutes. You see, he considers Belinda to be his girlfriend. And if he finds out about her and me, I'm going to be taking a very long, cold swim in Lake Mead. That's why I lied before. Well... Belinda Foster corroborate your story? Yeah, of course. But look, uh, there's really no need for anybody else to know about this, is there? No guarantees, Mr. Bartell. A man's life is at stake. Though we'd more likely cooperate with you if you cooperate with us. I am cooperating. So you are. Well, I want to know what really went on at those poker games. Okay. And we need the truth, Mr. Bartell. Will you excuse us for a moment? Come on, I've got a right to listen. If it weren't for me, he wouldn't even be here. I want you to sit down. I know you're trying to help, Melanie, but you've really got to stop what you're doing. Why? Because none of us can do our job properly when we have to constantly chase after you. We worry about you. So, don't worry about me. We also worry about your father. Now, I want your word that you'll do exactly as I say, or I won't be able to give your father a proper defense. Yeah, but... What if he goes to prison? I mean, we've got to do something about this. I've got to do something. I'm really scared. I know. I know you are. But it's going to be all right. The two of you will soon be going home together. Promise? Promise. Sergeant Hollenbeck, I am showing you a uh, nine millimeter Beretta, which has been marked People's Exhibit Number Eight, and which your department's ballistic expert testifies was the murder weapon. Do you uh, recognize it, sir? Yes, I do. That is the weapon which was found in the dumpster behind the hotel in which the defendant was staying. And did you? Uh, ascertain to whom this weapon was registered. Yes, it is registered to David Benson, the defendant. Thank you, Sergeant Hollenbeck. Nothing further. Your witness, Mr. Mason. <clears throat> Mr. Mason. Uh, Sergeant. Sergeant, did you see Mr. Benson put People's Exhibit number eight or any other weapon in the dumpster? No, sir, I did not. During your investigation, were you able to locate one, just one witness that saw Mr. Benson put something into the dumpster? No, sir, I was not. Thank you, Sergeant Hollenbeck. That, uh, that will be all. Oh, oh, Sergeant. I, I... Nothing further. The people call, uh, Mr. Martin Hockman.
We played blackjack in the casino until about midnight, and then my wife said she was tired and went upstairs. I gambled some more and then went upstairs, too. Did you see anything as you went upstairs, Mr. Hockman? <laughs> well, I got off the elevator on the 23rd floor mm -hmm. and had just started down the corridor to our room when I saw someone come out of a room a few doors down and head for the fire stairs. You see that person in this courtroom today? Yes, sir. That's him right there. Uh, let the record show that the witness, without hesitation, pointed directly to the defendant. Would you happen to have noticed what time it was when you saw him, sir? Yes, sir. It was 1.20 a.m. I had just looked at my watch. So he was right there in a hotel corridor at 1.20 a.m., and he was not out in a parking lot rendezvousing with some mystery oh. woman. Objection. Mr. Warner's question is cumulative, compound, and argumentative. Which draws a question. You saw the defendant at 1.20 a.m. in the hotel corridor, is that right? Yeah. Thank you. I have nothing further. Mr. Hockman, you say your wife went upstairs around midnight? That's right, yes. So you were in the casino for about an hour and 15 minutes without her? That's also right, yes. Doing what, exactly? Gambling. <coughs> Blackjack, mostly. Some craps. And drinking? Oh, no. I had a mild uh, heart attack about a year ago, so I'm on a very strict diet. No fat, no salt, absolutely no alcohol. How often do you come to Las Vegas, Mr. Hockman? Two, maybe three times a year. My wife and I both like to gamble. You tend to wager large amounts of money? Nothing I can't handle. Aren't you considered something of a high roller? Well, I suppose. That means you get special treatment by the hotel and the pit bosses, doesn't it? They take very good care of me, yes. And very good care includes nonstop free drinks to high rollers while they're gambling. I have seen them do that, yes. So you were in the casino receiving and consuming alcoholic drinks provided by the house? Absolutely not. My wife and my doctor would kill me if I was drinking alcohol. Ms. Reynolds, do you uh, recognize her, Mr. Hoffman? I, um, I'm not sure. Please, Mr. Hoffman, look again. She's wearing the same cocktail waitress uniform that she was wearing in the casino where you were gambling that night. Well, uh... You stood out that night, Mr. Hockman. You certainly stood out. You gambled and lost close to $60,000 and consumed at least three double scotches in less than an hour and a half, didn't you? Yes. I ask you once again... Were you drinking that night? Yes. Thank you, Miss Reynolds. You may sit down. When you got off that elevator at 1.20 that morning, you were feeling the effects of those drinks, weren't you? In fact, you were drunk, weren't you? Yeah, I think I was. In that condition, you saw someone coming out of Mr. Benson's room. Is that right? Yes but you don't know whether it was David Benson or some other person who had stolen Mr. Benson's gun and was on his way to kill Richard Stewart. Oh, wait a minute, please, objection. Mr. Mason is now arguing his case and using unfounded speculation to do so. Sustained. The next morning, Mr. Benson's picture and an article on the murder were in the morning paper. Did you see that paper? Yes, I did. Now, didn't you just assume that Mr. Benson and the person you saw were the same? Maybe I did, Mr. Mason. Mr. Hockman, can you honestly tell us you saw David Benson in that hotel corridor? No. No, I can't. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing further. Huh? 
Hi, your name Alice Sherman? Yes, who are you? My name's Ken Melansky. I'm looking for this woman. You recognize her? No, I don't. She was seen driving a small yellow convertible. You have a car like that, don't you? Well, I used to, but it was stolen about a month ago. You reported to the police? I believe my husband did. You know, if you don't mind, I, I gotta get ready for work. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't be more helpful. You knew Richard Stewart for how long, Mr. Bartell? About eight years. Was your relationship strictly business? Strictly business. To tell you the truth, I didn't like him very much. What about the other men at that poker game? Did they like him? Objection. Whether they uh, liked him or not, Your Honor, is irrelevant to our inquiry here. Mr. Mason is putting the victim on trial. If the court will bear with me, the relevancy of this line of questioning will soon become clear. Overruled. Witness may answer. They didn't like him either. If none of you liked Richard Stewart, why did you all fly to Las Vegas to play poker with him every year? We flew to Las Vegas. We didn't play poker. What did you do? Richard Stewart was blackmailing us. We'd each show up for the game. We would each write him a check for $75,000. We would sit around for a while, and then we would leave. The poker game was just a front. Correct. He would deposit the money in the bank. He would declare it as gambling winnings, pay taxes on it, and invest it, spend it, whatever. How long had this been going on? About five years. Did you enjoy being blackmailed? Why would I enjoy paying someone to keep his mouth shut about something that I wished had never happened in the first place? So for the four of you, Richard Stewart's death was somewhat of a blessing. You said that, Mr. Mason, not me. Thank you. No further questions. No questions. <clears throat> Maybe we could talk. Will you go away? Will you get out of my house? Tell me who was driving your car the night Richard Stewart was murdered. All right, yeah, go ahead. Call the cops. I'll just tell them about your part-time job. You can't prove one damn thing. Yes, uh, someone's broken into my house. I need the police. 
Oh, um, uh, no, never mind. I'm sorry. I, I, I made a mistake. Hi, honey. Hi. Thought you'd still be out shopping. Nothing was on sale. Who's this? Oh, uh, this is Jim Johnson. He's South Insurance. So is my cousin Ted. So I'm afraid we won't be needing any. Uh, that's what I told him. He was just about to leave. Well, I'm going to go change. We've got dinner tonight with Bob and Mimi at 8. You told him you were out shopping? Get out. Either you tell me where the woman is who was driving your car that night, or I tell your husband how you really spent this afternoon. Looks a little like me, doesn't it? Alice Sherman told me you borrowed her car that night, Jennifer. My name isn't Jennifer, it's Stephanie. Look, I know you were with David Benson the night Richard Stewart was murdered. I don't know why you lied about your name then or why you're lying now. But you can bet one way or another I'm going to find out. Richard Stewart had been murdered. I got scared. I asked Alice not to tell anyone I'd bought her car that night. You must have known you could give David Benson an alibi. Why didn't you come forward? Because I didn't want to get involved. You obviously don't have kids. Otherwise, you'd understand. Why'd you tell David your name was Jennifer? Because I didn't want it getting back to Richard Stewart that I was the one willing to sell him out. He held grudges in a big way. So what happens now? I get you a subpoena, you go to court, you tell the truth. For his sake, I'd get it over with. Which one is Stephanie? She's not here yet. How do you know she'll be here? Because I told her I'd do this if she didn't show. Uh. Dad. Good day, Carol. Yeah. Mr. Mason says after that woman testifies, he's going to ask for a dismissal. Ms. Young, the night Richard Stewart was murdered, do you remember where you went? Yes, I took a cab to a friend's house. Um, my car was in the shop and she was letting me borrow hers. I got the car, um, I picked up some ice cream, and I went home. Um, I ate the ice cream with my son, and then I went to bed. What happened later that night? Um, nothing. You called David Benson later that night, did you not? No. You called him and asked him to meet you at the Desert Grand Hotel parking lot. <laughs> no, I didn't. Ms. Young, I feel obliged to remind you that you are under oath and warn you that the penalty for perjury in this state is extremely severe. Now, weren't you with this man at approximately 1.15 a.m. in a downtown parking lot on the night Richard Stewart was murdered? I've never seen that man before in my life. That is true. 
why does the police drawing of the woman David Benson was with that night look exactly like you? I have no idea. And why does his description of the car she was driving match the car you borrowed? I don't know. Well, I do, Ms. Young. It's because you aren't telling the truth. You are lying. Objection. You lied when you told my client you had information for sale. You lied just now uh, when you denied ever talking back to his own witness. And the reason you keep lying is because you're helping whoever did the murder frame David Benson. You're on, on, now, I'm this is object you. object to this. I have nothing further. Objection sustained. Mr. Mason. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I have been very patient, sir. Did you say you have nothing further? Oh, oh, yes. It's, uh... Not often that I'm forced to impeach my own witness. That's it? That's it, Your Honor. And thank you. Cross-examination. Uh, no, that won't be necessary, Your Honor. You may step down. Thank you. Don't let her out of your sight. Same person that killed Richard Stewart. Had to be. Killed Stephanie to cover his tracks. Did you see the driver? No, the headlights were in my eyes. I couldn't even tell you the color of the car. Did she say anything to you before she died? Oh, just her son's name. What is her son's name? Well, nickname, I think. Skip. Skip? Let me see those photographs. Bella, what do we do with those faxes? Oh, wait. No, no, wait, 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 wait. No, if you now, want now, hold anything, hold on, hold on. We can finish that discussion another day. We have a whole long night ahead of us here. Here. Take some more. Mm. Your Honor, sir, I would, uh, I believe we provided the defense here and Mr. Mason with more than 
ample consideration. But he's very, very late, sir, and I'd like to request Your him to Your Honor, leave. my associate, Mr. Mason, has been unavoidably delayed. We expect him here at any moment. Excuse me, but Mr. Mason is here. Mr. Mason, you surprise me, and you're very late. I, I am sorry, Your Honor. Last night, we received new evidence, and it has taken all of the night and most of the morning to prepare it so that it could be presented to this court. I, I must ask the court's forgiveness for our appearance and my great tardiness. Mr. Mason, Mr. Warner, this court is known for its punctuality. Do not let this happen again. Understood? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Mason, are you ready? Uh, just uh, three minutes, Your Honor. Senator, how long had you known Richard Stewart? He started doing public relations for me during my second campaign for the Senate, uh, which was back in 79, 11 years ago. How long had he been blackmailing you? Five years. In five years, you paid him close to $400,000 not to reveal certain indiscretions that would have ruined your career, is that correct? Yes. Now, Senator, your income has decreased substantially over the past four years, has it not? I suppose. Wasn't it getting more difficult each year to pay Richard Stewart? I managed to. Senator Elliott, we are showing you a check marked Defense Exhibit D for identification, apparently drawn on your account. And we ask you if you can identify it. I gave this to Richard on the night that he was killed. We subpoenaed your bank records at 7 a.m. this morning, Senator. You knew when you wrote that check that it was no good. But you also knew Richard Stewart would never live to try to cash it. I won't dignify that accusation with a reply. Senator, did you leave the show that night? No. The two people you were with, Amanda and Gerald Stern, remember you leaving? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I do remember. I. Uh... I did leave for a minute or two. I went to the front desk to check and see if I had any messages, and then uh, I believe I went to the restroom. <laughs> Just the desk, and then the restroom. Yes. This is a photograph marked Defense Exhibit E for identification taken that night by the hotel photographer. That hotel photographer. Do you remember her? Yes. You remember that photograph? I remember it vividly. Jerry Stearns threw a fit when he saw this. <laughs> it's a terrible picture. He had another one taken. Now, this photograph marked Defense Exhibit F for identification is the second photograph taken that night, is it not? Yes. And it's a much better picture. More than that, Senator. And photograph number one you're wearing a shirt with cufflinks. In photograph number two, your shirt has button cuffs. You changed your shirt, Senator. You went upstairs. You killed Richard Stewart. And you changed your shirt because your shirt had his blood all over it. Isn't that true? No. No? No? Tell us about your connection to Stephanie Young. There is no connection. Your corporation has been sending her an $8,000 check every month for the past six years. Yet you say no connection. That night she lured Benson away from his hotel for you. Yet you say no connection. At 
one o'clock, you left the show, stole a passkey from a maid's cart, went to David Benson's room, stole his gun. Then you went to Richard Stewart's room, and because he knew of your connection with Stephanie Young, you shot him dead. That is not true. You have a nickname, Senator. What is it? Skip. Some people call me Skip. Stephanie Young gave birth to a son six years ago. She called him Skip. He's your son, isn't he, sir? You sent Stephanie monthly checks to support him and to make sure she kept very quiet. Richard Stewart heard about that son and decided to up his blackmail. You were afraid Stephanie would ask for more. You could no longer afford to pay them more. So you killed them. Simple. You just killed them. I had no idea what I was going to do to him. That guy arrived in the room. And he's carrying a gun. And then, as you say, it became simple. It was going to be so easy without the two of them milking me dry. I was going to be able to take care of my boy. And it all figured out. Simple. I just killed them. of these developments, Your Honor, the state moves that all charges against the defendant uh, be dismissed. So ordered. Bailiff, take Mr. Elliot into custody. Case dismissed. Just because I snuck out on you didn't mean that I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that. <laughs> Perry, thank you. Property section kindly brought me your gear. I'm sure it's all there. Well, goodbye, you two. Bye bye now. Bye. Okay. I just wanted to thank you. You kept your promise, and I'll never forget you. Never. You know, she wasn't so bad. <laughs> Easy for you to say. Easy for me to say.